الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد آتينا لؤمان الحكمة أن اشكر لله ومن يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد وإذ قال لؤمان لابنه وهو يعيده يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن شرك لظلم عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمين يا رب Let me again today <coughs> start by giving you one meaning of hikmah that I had given you in the last two Jummah khutbahs. But this Jummah khutbah, I'm going to give you two additional meanings to the word hikmah. Actually three, but two. The meaning of hikmah that I had given you last time was that when you are in a state of fitrah, human disposition, natural human state, and then you add knowledge to that, the way that you will view the world from that gives you hikmah. And I went into some detail about this, but today I want to show the meaning of hikmah from a different perspective, but it comes to the same conclusion. The meaning, one of the meanings of hikmah is وَدَعَا شَيْءٌ فِي مَوَادِعِهِ وَدَعَا شَيْءٌ فِي مَوَادِعِهِ Putting everything in the right place. When you, put, when you have the ability to put everything in the right place, this is hikmah, this is wisdom. And this hikmah is of two types. Hikmah ma'anawiyya wa hikmah madaniyya. The understanding of what, where our things are from the perspective of meaning and definition and concepts. And the second is madaniya, where you understand where things come together or where things are in their place in the world of civilization around us. For example, what did we call the doctors of the past, hakims? The doctors of the past, they were called Hakims. Why? Because the doctors of the past, they knew how much of the material you need from here, how much, how much of sugar you need, how much of honey you need, or whatever you need to put in together the ingredients to make some results come out of that. He was a Hakim. And so this is the second meaning of Hikmah that I'm giving you. وَضَعَا شَيْءٌ فِي مَوَادِعِهِ So hikmah is of two types. Hikmah of things, how to put things together. There's a carpenter working outside. He knows how to build it together, hikmah. And the other meaning is understanding the things in its right perspective in terms of meaning and concept. The third meaning of hikmah is milk, malak, to have control of something. This is why we say hakuma. Hakuma is government. Why? Because they have control. Hikmah means hakuma means or hukka means command. Hakuma means hukka means command. Hakuma means government. Because hikmah means milkia. You have control over something. When someone has control over understanding the nature of things, when he has control, he's a sage, he's a wise man. He understands the nature of things, therefore he has control over them. When Allah has given somebody an understanding of things, it means he has given him understanding of it, control of it. So whether that also, malkia, also is ma'nawiyya or madaniyya. 
When Allah has given you control over others, then you have hakuma, for example. When you have control over concepts and understanding of the reality of things, then you have hikmah ma'anawiyya. So I have given you three definitions of hikmah. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُغْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Now over here for the Arab brothers I want to share. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Arabic language too. Over there Allah says, إِنَّا عَطَيْنَا كَلْكَوْثِ Over here is, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُغْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Over there you have, رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا مَا فَرَقْ بَيْنَا الْآتَى وَالْأَعْطَى وَالْحَبْ أَعْطَى إِنَّا عَطَيْنَا كَالْكَوْثَرْ إِنَّا عَطَيْنَا كَالْكَوْثَرْ With the Ayn means the one who gives something to someone that no one else will have. Meaning the Hawth al-Kawthar لِلْرَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ فَقَدْ This is أَعْطَى وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُكْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ This is that we have given Lukman wisdom as a responsibility. Just like إِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ And حَبْلَنَا is something that doesn't happen except by the will of Allah, the grace of Allah. رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَسْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَانًا so I was saying anyhow, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُكْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ And so Allah gave Lukman hikmah. Which type of hikmah? He was a carpenter. So in that sense, he had the hikmah, the control over wood. But the real meaning here is that he had the understanding of things. Hikmah ma'anawiyya. And in order for you to understand where everything belongs, in order for you to understand in the in the nature of things, where everything's mawadir, wada'a shayun fi mawadirihi. How do you understand where do things belong? How can you understand that if your natural disposition is not there? And the litmus test for the natural disposition is how much shukr you have towards other people, which I'll be talking about some of the research that's going on with gratitude nowadays, I'll be talking about that too, if Allah wills. But then now let me come to the other concept, which is the concept of shukr, gratitude. I mentioned gratitude last time from the perspective that gratitude gives you the litmus test of how much human nature you have. How much goodness you have is the litmus test. But today I want to discuss this in more details and give you more perspectives on this. Number one, what is gratitude? What is shukr? What does it mean to say alhamdulillah? I mean, what is it really? I mean, it's words, right? Thank you Allah. Or I thank someone. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرُ اللَّهِ the Prophet said, whoever doesn't thank the people doesn't thank of Allah. وَإِن شَكَرْتَ النَّاسِ فَقَدْ شَكَرَ اللَّهِ إِنْ كَانَ مُوَاحِدًا نعم. So, the one who gives thanks, he has that much fitrah. Do you have thanks when what happens? The mean, I'm talking not just meaning, I'm talking about the psychological effect is that the moment you are thanking someone, or the moment you are thanking Allah, it is a celebration. It is a moment of celebration. You're saying, thank you so much. I really am thankful that you did this for me. Or you see a car accident, and you're driving by, and you're saying in your mind, oh Allah, thank you, that wasn't me. You're really celebrating. Shukr is a moment of celebration. You see someone less fortunate than you, and you say, oh, alhamdulillah, I don't have this problem or this issue. Usually it takes somebody less fortunate for you to remind you how fortunate you are. So shukr is a moment of reflection, 
in which you are celebrating your circumstance. And interestingly enough, in year 2000, October of 2000, they discovered, starting with Berkeley University, they discovered that gratitude is a human emotion. They figured it out. That gratitude is a human emotion, like you have fear, like you have sadness, you have disgust, so on and so forth. They, they, it's a human emotion, and they said we should we should do research on this human emotion that we have never really done. They had there was very little research up till the year two thousand on sugar, on gratitude, feeling feeling genuine happiness towards someone, or happiness or thankfulness towards someone. This emotion, they, there was very little research. From now, from the year 2000 till today, more than $20 million have been spent in doing research on gratitude, understanding what it is. And research shows that people that have gratitude are less stressful, they heal faster. People that, are, that show genuine gratitude, they are better in their relationships, the people that are, have a genuine gratitude are able to get along with other people. They're able to cope with trauma and difficult circumstances better than other people. This thing that was discovered in the year 2000, Quran is saying, first line of Quran is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. The first line, the first phrase, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. All praises for Allah, Lord of the worlds. He's the Rabb, the caretaker of the worlds. People that have gratitude feel that even when they are in a bad or unfortunate situation, that they always come out in life in a, situ in a situation where they always come out of the bad situation. And I want to quote to you one psychologist. Uh, his name is Robert Emmons. And Robert Emmons is the, is the, the, you can say the foremost psychologist who has studied gratitude. He is the forerunner. He is the, he is the guy who has written a lot of journals, articles, um, intellectual articles on the subject of gratitude. And he says, well actually Sir John uh, Hamilton who started this uh, emotional study. He says, when we fill our minds with blessings and gratitude, when we fill our minds with blessings and gratitude, an inner shift occurs. When you're looking at the positive things in your life, an inner shift occurs our, in our consciousness as we focus on the abundance in our lives rather than what we lack, a wonderful pr blueprint, meaning that shift creates a new blueprint for the, of a new future. Right, for a better future. You start seeing things in positive light. And so, uh, and also I want to mention, you know, this can't be overestimated. According to the mystics of Islam, according to the people who do healing of the heart, purification of the soul, shukr is a prerequisite for any spiritual growth. You know, even in the tasbihat we say it's, we say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah is next. Subhanallah is the is the acceptance that Allah is perfect. When you say Subhanallah, you're saying Allah is perfect. Who is Subhani? And the second thing is Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah. You can't grow spiritually until you have that within you that when somebody does something good for you, you feel some sort of you want to thank, because the least you can do is say thank you. You want to do something back for them. So, Allah says, today I want to go more of the Arabic language. Also I want to. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُكْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ آتَاهُ الْحِكْمَةَ لِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ أَنْ شُكْرَ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ يعني بدون شكر Without shukr, there is no hikmah. 
ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن يشكر لله وما يشكر. Now notice here for the people that know Arabic grammar. Over here, وما يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسي في المضارع في المضارع. ومن كفر في الماضي. لأن فإن الله غني حميد. وما يشكر فإنما يشكر في المضارع. يشكر لنفسي ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد. للماضي لمن؟ Why in the past? كفر is in the past so that Allah can be show clearly. فإن الله غني حميد. هذا شيء يعني حقيق من بعيد. يعني بعد يعني بعيد. Anyway. ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن يشكر لله وما يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد. وإذ قال لقمان لابنه. We've been through this part, so I'm going to continue further. So لقمان then says, oh, I want to also mention. And then لقمان says, إن شرك لا ظلم عظيم. Shirk is a great error, a ظلم. And the meaning of ظلم is the opposite of the meaning of hikmah. شَيْءٌ وَضْعَ شَيْءٌ فِي مَوَادِعِهِ Meaning of it is hikmah. Putting things in its rightful place is hikmah. Putting things outside its right, rightful place is ظلم. When you take something outside its rightful place, مِنْ غَيْرِ مَوَادِعِهِ When you take something out of its rightful place, this is wrong. Somebody has a right, it should be in a certain place. You take away his right, this is ظلم now, this is wrong. So over there Allah said hikmah, which means to put things in its rightful place. Over here Allah said ظلم, which means to take things out of its, uh, to take things out, out of their right place to, the, to a wrong place. So the first of the rights in which things have to be put in the right place is the, the affirmation of the existence of Allah. The second of the rights is the rights of your parents or the rights of the human beings around you. And the third of them is to generally understand that everything that you do, good or bad, will result have some real results in, in your life, in this life or the next life. And then the opposite of this is arrogance. So then Luqman alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, وَلَا تُصَائِلْ خَطَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ don't, don't, give, don't turn your cheek from the people. Don't be arrogant towards the people. وَلَا تُصَائِلْ خَطَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَهَا Obviously a person who is thankful to other people, which is the beginning of wisdom, will lose that wisdom when he puts himself in the wrong place. يَنِي نَفْسَهُ وَضْعَى نَفْسَهُ خَارِجِي From the right place that he should be. When he becomes arrogant, then he can't see things right. And he therefore loses wisdom. وَلَا تُصَائِلْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا And don't walk on the earth. This walking, this terminology of Qur'an is very interesting because you know how gangsters walk. Everybody, it seems like when they get near, they start walking weird. You know, they, people start walking like they got broken legs. Yeah, Allah gave you legs, but you walk like you got broken legs. Especially like the thugs and the gangsters, you know, they, they walk like all proud. So it, it's interesting because I'll, teach, I'll share with you something that uh, the face shows what is at the conscious level of your, meaning you show your happiness or your sadness from face immediately. But your legs move in a position that you are, you are thinking about unconsciously. I'll give you an example. A guy is talking to a guy and he's showing his facial expressions to this guy. But his feet move in one side and there's a girl in that position that means subconsciously he's thinking of that girl consciously he's talking to him what I'm trying to say is the feet and your legs so you're from your face it is your conscious what you're showing the people your persona 
and your legs move and your, your, as you go down the body, it moves also towards your subconscious. So what your legs do makes a difference. And this is why you always find, no matter what culture, could be, could be the African American culture, could be the Pakistani culture, the Arab culture, when young kids think that they're something that they're not, they start walking strange. You know, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبَّ كُلَّ مُخْتَارِ الْخَخُورِ So Luqman says, don't walk on the world, on this world, as if, you know, as if you're proud. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبَّ كُلَّ مُخْتَارِ الْخَخُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love the arrogant, boastful people. And this topic is mentioned in the Quran three times, but I'm going to continue the last part of this خُطْبَةً إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّ سَكِنَ خُطْبَةً قُلْ قَوْلِي هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ نَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ ولا تصائل خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرها إن الله لا يحب كل مختار فقول وقصد في مشيك وضم من صوتك إن أنكر الأسوات إلى صوت الحمير. الله says and then when you walk don't walk too fast don't walk too slow but keep the medium way and when you speak don't speak too loud meaning speak in the middle way. This ending here is one of the main principles of wisdom in life. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the, the Prophet ﷺ, خَيْرُ الْأُمُورِ أَوْ سَاطِحَ خَيْرُ الْأُمُورِ أَوْ سَاطِحَ The best of affairs is the middle one. Don't walk too fast. Don't walk too, too slow. Don't be too confident. Don't be too timid. You know, everything should be, generally speaking, in the middle. Don't be buying too expensive things, but don't also be buying the cheapest things that you're going to regret that you bought. So keep things in the middle. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبَّ كُلَّ مُخْتَارٍ فَخُورٍ وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِيكَ وَغْضُذْ مِنْ سَوْتِكَ And this part, وَغْضُذْ مِنْ سَوْتِكَ إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْسْوَاتِ لَسَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ Indeed, the braying of the donkey is the worst of the voices. It's very interesting and I'll explain to you why. Because when you read the Aesop's fables, the fables of Luqman and by the way, historically, how do we know that Luqman is the author of the Aesop's fable? This is an important question. I just want to give the gist of it. The ahadith of the Prophet give a description of who he is. 